I have a few really eye-opening stats that I'd like to share with you. So let's go look at these. For example, as many as 50% of businesses claim that system connectivity issues have been preventing them from really achieving a full and what they would consider a successful ERP implementation. And that's a big deal. If half the companies say that systems connectivity is like a barrier that they're trying to break down, that's obviously something that we need to address. Additionally, 85%, I found this as well, 85% of businesses view systems connectivity as crucial and really of a strategic importance, you might say, with I think it's 65% of CEOs saying the ability of their systems to be integrated is, is critical to their digital transformation goal. So that's obviously quite, quite a large number of CEOs being concerned as well. And then this I thought was really interesting. A nucleus Research did a study and found that on average, a business can realize approximately seven over $7 for every dollar spent uh, on these systems connectivity improvements. From an automation standpoint, Deloitte conducted a study and found that, that businesses that are really utilizing these technologies like Power Automate, they, they definitely see uh, an experience a reduction up to 20 to 30% in their operating costs in as much as like 50% increase in productivity. And then of course, not to mention the improved lead times because these processes are, are shorter, they're taking less time. So everything is quicker. So far, we talked about what is motivating other businesses to consider in, uh, investing systems connectivity and process automation. But I'd really like to know what might be motivating all of you to maybe consider some of these changes. Elisa, do we have a poll question for them? Yes, we do. Poll question one, what is motivating you to learn more about ERP systems connectivity and process automation? The need to operate more efficiently, the need for data across systems to be consistent or accurate, the need for converting more manual or paper-driven processes to a digital process. Okay, good. just a few more seconds. Looks like the need to operate more efficiently is definitely a strong one. All right. So let's start with some definitions. And as I said, I, I wanted to give everybody sort of a common definition of, of really what is Microsoft Power Platform. Simply put, it's a low code productivity platform. And I want everybody to think of it as like a collection of tools. And these tools allow business to, to really do quite a few things. They can create applications. So we, if we have a need that none of our current systems can meet or solve, we can create a whole new application. So that's pretty powerful. Obviously, they can, either, they can create websites and web portals, like customer per, uh, service portals, for example, automate a business process, or they can even train a custom AI model. So we can, we'll talk about that, more about all that later. But some of you already might be familiar with Power BI, uh, which is another uh, tool in Power Platform. Of course, it's a business intelligence tool. Uh, but today, we're really going to focus on what I consider the core of Power Platform, and that's Power Automate. So... All the other tools like Power Apps can play a big role as well, but, but Power Automate is really what, where the magic happens. So now I'm going to talk about a couple of, of what I consider the crucial tools and components, right, that are needed to support ERP connectivity and automation. First, we have to discuss Dataverse. Dataverse is essentially a type of database. So many of the, the Microsoft 365 apps that you have, like Teams, Outlook, uh, Word, Excel, all of those, uh, and, and of course, applications uh, through Dynamics 365 uh, and even the Power Platform, they're all built on top of Dataverse, right? And that allows you to store and secure the data that, that all these applications uh, and services use. Again, as I said earlier, this enables a business to, say, build a custom app and automate it with workflows. And with all of the data that's needed to run, to manage that process would all be managed in, or I should say set and be managed inside of Dataverse. So you can see from the diagram there how really at the core of all these things sits Dataverse. So th this concept of a, of a shared database, you might think of it as almost like a foundation layer. It's really known in our industry as a common data model. And in my opinion, and I think probably the, the opinion of many others, is this really is how modern business applications are going to continue to be delivered and, and supported well into the future. So the more that we invest in these sorts of technologies, the more future-proof your environments will become, right? So certainly something that, that I would obviously strongly suggest paying attention to. So next, you know, of course, as I said before, really where the magic happens with Power Automate. So Power Automate, it's one of the Power Platform tools. It allows us to automate processes and tasks. 
we can connect it to just about anything, right? So it can be ERP systems, it can be CRM systems, it can be work order management systems, manufacturing, budgeting applications, power, uh, project management applications, you name it. And we'll go through a whole list later. But the whole point is that, as I mentioned earlier, these it, it really does allow the connectivity is really the crucial point there. Automating things is just a, a is sort of a byproduct and, and one of the, the, the benefits, but really being able to connect these things is ultimately its strong suit. And as I mentioned earlier, just to make sure everybody hears this, it we can, uh, with Power Automate, we can connect both with cloud and on-premise applications, databases, and environments, right? So let's talk about some of the benefits. So number one, a business would be able to connect to just a, a myriad of, of applications and tools. Certainly all of Microsoft's solutions. So that's Power Platform, that's Dynamics 365, that's Microsoft 365. Many of you on this media, uh, webinar today probably use one or more of the tools in that set, but they can also connect to well over a thousand different business applications outside of the Microsoft uh, sort of sphere, if you will, and in different applications and services using what we call data connectors. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. Uh, you can also create custom connectors. So that gives us the ability to connect to just about any system or data source um, using Power Automate and Power Platform. It can work with data sets as well uh, as like a, a pseudo ETL utility. So that's doing things like migrating data or managing a data retention policy. A lot of times businesses are trying to really manage their data better. They're trying to clean it up and, and, and keep it clean. And obviously we talked earlier about integrity being a big driver. So that's certainly something that Power Automate can help with. And probably one of the most advantageous and one of the largest benefits is being able to automate a process. We've yet to come across a, a request to automate a business process that we could not support with Power Automate. They can manage the steps and actions in a process. Obviously, like we're talking about with connectivity, it can sync data between applications or push data back and forth. Um, it can route documents. It can manage contract approvals, email notifications, just you name it. So we're going to talk about that in more detail in just a little bit. But another thing that is, is something that most people miss with Power Automate when they do their research is that Power Automate supports what we call robotic process automation. You might see that referred to as RPA at some point, which basically RPA allows you to, to automate many of those sort of like repetitive kind of mundane tasks that nobody really wants to do on the, you know, on the team, but somebody's got to do it. And it may be a situation where you can't necessarily automate it through a digital means. It has to be something where, I'll give you an example later, but it might be something where, you know, you can teach the art of the robot to, to literally log into a, a developer's or a manufacturer's website, get pricing, and then import it into your accounting system, right? We can do that using RPA. All right. So moving on. So let's talk about specifically about some ERP connectivity scenarios. Now, you know, so... We can have automate or Power Automate help you get the most out of your accounting system. So we've helped clients use Power Automate to extend the capabilities of their ERP system and support a variety of different, what I call use cases or scenarios. The most commonly, common I should say, typically involves connecting an ERP or accounting system to CRM or maybe a, a website such as a customer portal or even like business intelligence services like uh, Power BI, like I mentioned earlier. We've also built a lot of custom integrations and connections to systems like work order uh, systems or managers or management software, I should say, manufacturing systems and um, several project management platforms. So you can see the list. Uh, and this is just a small list. This is just some of the examples and scenarios, I should say, that the LBNC team has run into and assisted with so far. Um, and again, this is a, of a young product. It's only been out for a couple of years or so now. Um, so that this list of different scenarios that we have uh, we assist clients with, it continues to grow. So if you don't see something on this list, it doesn't mean that it's not something that we can't, uh, a scenario that we might be able to help you with. We likely can. But like I mentioned earlier, there's this concept of data connectors. So just to make sure everybody understands that these are just out of the box. So a data connector is a pre-built template, right? Think of it as a pre-built template. Uh, in our in our terms, we call it an API wrapper. But essentially, a data connector will allow Power Automate to 
connect with other systems and sources, whether that's an ERP system, a CRM system, some other service or, or platform that's out there. We're doing a, a project currently that, that involves a uh, third-party logistics provider application. You name it, we can go in there and either we use a pre-built data connector, or again, we can actually create uh, custom connectors um, when needed. So there's approximately a thousand data connectors available right now, but that list is constantly growing. Every time I go in there, the number keeps getting higher and higher. So there's more and more sort of developers, LBMC, and, and even clients publish their connectors that they build into this sort of library or directory of these data connectors. Now, just to understand too, that there's really two types of connectors. There's like a standard connector and a premium connector. So the standard connectors are available for free as long as you have a Power Automate subscription, right? So we'll talk about that towards the end, but every, every subscription would have access to the standard connectors. And then there are a few what are called premium connectors, and those do have an annual subscription component to them, but typically they're pretty inexpensive. It's definitely not going to break the bank in any way. They're relatively low cost. And of course, like I said earlier, you have that ability to create custom connectors. We've done several of those as well for clients. And so that would allow us to create a connector that was unique to your needs. And as I mentioned before, for those of you who have on-premise applications on databases, SQL or MySQL or what have you, and you want to connect to Power Platform so you can start leveraging all these new tools, right? I don't want you to feel left out. So we did have the ability to deploy what we call, it's, it's called a data gateway. And it allows us to essentially collect data from that local database and be able to sync it with Power Automate in Power Platform. And so we'll talk about that a little bit later in the demo as well. All right. So now I want to talk about specifically more about what are some of these scenarios that we had mentioned earlier. Uh, and I've got four of these I'd like to review, and then we'll take a look at uh, Power Automate uh, in a demo here. Uh, so number one, probably, and it's because my team also does a lot of CRM support, we see a lot of ERP and CRM connectivity projects and scenarios including automation, right? So we talked earlier about keeping data in sync and, and promoting data, uh, higher data integrity. But an example of that would be your accounting data, things like customer data, contacts, addresses. So you can imagine that's a pretty, sounds like a pretty simple thing, but you'd be surprised how many clients don't keep their ERP and CRM data in sync is, is the way they should. And it can lead to problems down the line. Another is quoting. We'd love for our sales team to be able to produce quotes out of CRM, but in many cases they can't because the, the pricing and the item availability and item details are, are only in the ERP system and they don't really have that in the CRM. So a lot of clients will just do a quote in a spreadsheet and attach it in CRM. But there's a much better way if, if it's something where you want to quote out of CRM, we support that too. We would just make sure that the product details and pricing and everything was published from your ERP system to your CRM system. Another example would be then in CRM, when there's a new deal, a sale is closed, excuse me, a new sale is closed. We, it'd be great if no one had to actually key that in to the accounting system. I, I think I mentioned this earlier. So we could automate that too, to where a closed deal comes in as a sales order in your accounting system. And of course we hear sales teams all the time speak of the need to be able to see sales revenues, purchase history, What's the status of the client's order? I need to make sure it gets out. And so they're constantly probably sending the accounting teams emails all the time saying, hey, where are we up with this? Or, hey, how much did ABC company purchase last year? They, I thought they'd be, you know, they, they would have already purchased so much by now. And so they, they can't really see that purchase history very well. And it causes a disconnect. And then, of course, things like order status would be helpful. Another use case that we had not long ago or scenario was AR collections. This makes sense. Now, I don't necessarily mean the sales team or the team in CRM doing the collections per se. They certainly could. But the one thing that, that this client wanted to make sure of is that the, the customer could not make additional purchases if they were on some type of a collections hold. So we were able through the system or through Power Automate to be able to flag that account to say that, oh, no, this account's on a purchase hold. And what's nice about that is the accounting team controls that from their end, right? So they can remove that hold once the, the AR is caught up. And then, of course, some specialty th areas where it might be we're creating projects or contracts from a closed deal in the CRM system. 
But those are just, a, that's just a short list. That, this, that list alone could probably be 20 or probably three, two to three times that size, but that gives you a good idea. Now, another common request that we see a lot these days is integrating our ERP system or accounting system with a website or a web portal. The most common example of that is you have like a web store uh, where we need to, to take our order transactions. But in some cases, the e-commerce platforms have integrations with the ERP and accounting systems. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they need help there. So we're able to come in and help support that. Uh, same with product data. Obviously, we want to keep our web store in sync with our accounting system so that all of our product details and whatnot are, are accurate and, and um, consistent. And then, of course, things like item availability and pricing. Your accounting and ERP system should be your, your, the master of that item and product data and, of course, master of the pricing data. Uh, that's not always the case, but I would say 95 plus percent of the time that is the case. And then, of course, uh, a customer web portal. Web portals are becoming very common and more and more clients, they don't want to have a separate portal application or a portal to manage in addition to their ERP system or their CRM system. We've got a, a recent use case where a client had, and you're going to see this in a demo example, I think that Tyler's going to do a little bit, is they had a dealer network and that dealer needed to be able to submit basically order requests or material requests through that portal. But another common thing we see is things like syncing of customer data and their invoice history. And then we have another client that wanted the ability to take requests, a return request, and have that sync to their, their on-premise accounting system to generate an RMA. And then as that RMA, as we receive the item back in, the RMA would be updated, and then it would update the service request in CRM and in the portal, in the, um, the customer portal. So a couple of quick examples on how we can use Power Automate to link to websites or, or, or web portals. Some other examples you might think of, we've done some connectivity with project management tools and services, built professional services billing applications. Sometimes lines of, or, or companies will have the industry favored billing system that they send their billing through. And a lot of times those still have to in some way make it back to the ERP system or the accounting system. And that's where we've, we've come in before. Same thing with contracts. But what, one thing I wanted to draw attention to in this particular slide was the custom apps. And this can be a power app that we would create in Power Platform. That's the ideal scenario because you're using all the other tools like Power Automate to support the concept. But if you wanted to build a custom app or, or if you already have one you've already built, we can use Power Automate to link that application with your accounting uh, and ERP system. Great example of that, we've actually just started this project where we're creating a purchase request app. Uh, and we're using Power Automate to sync purchase requests between this custom uh, Power app we're building and Business Central in that case, so that they can process purchases on the accounting side. And then we did one not long ago that involved work orders and managing work orders. And then, of course, we all know uh, that on the reporting and BI side, a common example there would be using the data gateway and syncing data with Dataverse so that Power BI could perhaps be used. But there's other re reporting tools as well that you can connect to Dataverse. All right. One more, and then we're going to see a demo here. So in this one, I wanted to focus on process automation. So process automation, there's... <laughs> Really, the sky is the limit. It just matters the, about the, sort of the creativity as how, how creative you want to get with it. But when it comes to process automation, some examples, some really good examples that we've run into was we had one client that really wanted to use Power Automate as like a notification center. So they wanted to be able to create some custom, very specific use cases around email notifications. And they also wanted the ability to do SMS notifications, so text notifications. So they were using Power Automate to really support that sort of notification center concept. Another would be approval workflows. That is very common. There's just a couple of examples that we've uh, either researched and or completed in the past. For example, like a credit limit review process. If you issue a, a credit line or line of credits or just have a credit limit that you want to enforce on a client, and let's say that they request a, a higher a line of credit, but that process can sometimes be managed by phone calls or emails and everything else. But in this case, we can use Power Automate to automate that credit review process. 
Same thing with maybe a journal entry approval process. So this was something that came up not long ago where we perhaps had a need to approve those journal entries over, their, over a certain amount. So that would be another great example. Monitoring ERP activity. This is something that uh, we also see. Some great examples of that would be like a, a low stock sort of reorder workflow where we get to a certain point, maybe the ERP system just doesn't really have a lot of that sort of built-in functionality to, to raise awareness around these sorts of things, these, these different types of situations that you really need to be keeping track of. You can use Power Automate to help with that, right? It can actually monitor the data and notify you or give you a heads up, right? However you'd want to be notified, email, text, whatever, that, hey, we have this item that's it's at that low stock threshold. And a lot of times there's reports and things you can run, but this would be like a nudge to remind somebody. Same thing with, with like back order status. When something is back in stock, if you had a particular salesperson or someone that wanted to be notified when an order became back in stock, we could use Power Automate to, to support that sort of concept. And then, as I mentioned earlier, a great example of automating a process is through RPA. We had a client that every, I think it was every two weeks, it was like twice a month, I think, they had to go out to a manufacturer's website and they would need to download the latest pricing schedule for the products they purchased through that manufacturer. And so we're talking about a manual step where someone had to go out, log into the website, download the file, and then take that file and upload it into this. And, you know, and so there was many multiple steps. So even though that's a human being that would normally do those steps through a browser and, and upload and download data, or even update the file before they imported it, we can actually automate that with an RPA process. So neat stuff. All right. So Elisa, I, I believe we have another poll question, if I'm not mistaken. I believe we do. The next poll question, thank you, Jason, is how many systems or applications do you currently have connected to your ERP or accounting system? So the options are zero, one to three, four to five, or more than six. I apologize, but we can circle back here. Here's the question. How many systems or applications do you currently have connected to your ERP or accounting system? And we'll give just a few more seconds here. Hopefully the answer is at least B, but we'll see. Maybe we'll have some six pluses. Looks like we have a lot of one to threes. So if I'm sharing the results Good. here, you were right. B is the winner. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All right. All right. That's, what I, that's what I figured. Probably the, the right number. I was just curious. We do have four that indicated it had six plus. True. Right. So they, they, yes. They teach, maybe uh, some, some, <laughs> give me some ideas or some scenarios that they ran into. All right. I think we're time, or it's time to take a look at Power Automate. Before we do, I wanted to present the examples that we're going to see in our Power Automate demo that Tyler has prepared for us today. But number one, we're going to see an example of an ERP to CRM scenario. This is one that we touched on earlier, but I wanted to explain the moving parts, at least give you a, a visual here. And in this case, we're talking about GP to Dynamics 365 CRM, right? So this is, gives you an easier way to digest the information. So you, on the left, you can see we have our GP database sitting there on premise. We have our data gateway that I mentioned earlier. So think of those like power platform data gateway. And that sits, that's installed on the server as well. So it's constantly communicating with the GP server and, and database. And then it's taking that information and syncing it with Power Automate. And then, of course, like we've been talking about this whole time, Power Automate would then apply whatever additional logical behavior that we need it to do, whatever that is. And in this case, maybe it's just pushing some data to Verse, which, as I said earlier, if everybody was keeping up, that CRM, or Dynamics 365, sits on top of Dataverse. So it doesn't have a separate database. Dataverse is its database. Along with any of those custom Power App that uh, I mentioned before, we can create a custom Power App. Those all sit on data. Another example we're going to take a look at is for ERP to website scenario. So in this case, it'll be BC, and we're seeking that to a dealer portal that I mentioned earlier. But that dealer portal is actually built on Power Pages, which is the, the website slash web portal service or tool, if you will, to create websites, essentially, or develop websites. And it would sit on top of Dataverse as well. So you can see here in this case, it's, a, it's more of a direct path since Business Central is already part of Microsoft 365's environment. Um, we're seeking directly through Power Automate into Dataverse. 
but I didn't want to leave my, my intact folks out. So just to explain how this might work with an intact scenario, of course, we know all know intact is a web-based ERP system. Um, we at LBMC um, do a lot of integration work with intact. And we do that in, a lot of times with our integrator plus solution. So you can see here in this situation, integrator plus would be communicating with intact, very similar to how data gateway works. This is our own integration utility that we created. And in that situation, Integrator Plus would th then be communicating with Power Automate and then onto Dataverse or, or any other uh, application as needed, right? I, I say Dataverse here in all these examples, but it could be any other web-based application, not necessarily a Dataverse-supported product like Dynamics or, again, uh, a Power App. All right. I think we're ready to jump into our demo here. So if everybody give me just a second, I'm going to pause my screen sharing and we're going to get our demo pulled up, make sure everybody can hear it. And so take it away here, Tyler. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Tyler Boswell. I'm a um, senior developer and solution architect here at LBM. Um, and as Jason stated, um, I'm going to show you a demo of um, Power Automate being used to move data from Daters into a ERP system, as well as from the ERP system into Dataverse. The first example that we'll be doing is for Dynamics GP. As Jason had shown in a previous slide, this leverages the use of the on-premise data gateway to connect to the GP SQL server and query those tables and databases to get the data that we need to bring into Dataverse to be used in CRM. Uh, the first example that I will show here is a improvement on efficiency for the client. A process that they have regularly is that they will need to do what is called a redate of an order, which is effectively changing the date in which an order is going to be shipped. This is a function of their customer service department, of which doesn't have access to GP. So going into GP to change those order dates isn't really a process that they could easily follow. On the CRM side of things, they will do what is called an order redate, where they will choose a code, which is effectively the reason that the order is being redated, the new date that the order should ship on, and then just any detail notes. Once an order redate is completed, we have a Power Automate flow in place that will send that data to GP and update the order. Looking at how that works here, we have our trigger, which is just triggering on the create of a, what we call an order redate record in an entity. We get the code associated with the order redate. We get the order associated with the redate. And then we have a stored procedure that we created and added to the GP company database that is used for updating the ship date on a order. All of this data is grabbed from the various records in CRM, and then the stored procedure is executed on the SQL Server side, a connection being created using the on-premise data gateway, and then you see the order in GP get updated, and then we have a comment update that takes place where effectively we're just updating the comment in CRM to mirror what's in GP, just in case any other comments have been added. Once, once that happens, they can see the updates in GP. And we can take a look at one of the flow executions that have happened so that you all can see how that works. We have an order redate that was created. We get the code from it. We get the information that we need from the order. And then you can see here where we're spending the necessary data to the stored procedure in SQL that is then updating the order in GP. This is a scenario where data is being pushed to GP from CRM, but we also have cases where we're getting data from GP and bringing it into CRM. For example, we have orders coming into CRM. So let's take a look. That one. As far as orders coming into CRM goes, 
just as some background for how this overall solution has been architected, we have custom tables that exist in the Dynamics database on the GP server that basically store events that happen in GP. This is our way of being triggered and being notified that we need to bring data into CRM from GP. The way that this particular flow works is once we're once we find a order number in our custom table, we then go out, execute a stored procedure that was written, and that gets us our header info for the order, which we then parse. And then we do the same thing for the order detail. We call a table, give it a filter, and then we parse our data in the way that we need to use it. From there, we find the customer using the account number. We are we use the account number in CRM as our way of finding a unique customer in GP. So this is how we keep our data integrity strong and make sure that we don't have an issue of incorrect customers being in the CRM or in GP that will always be able to know where a GP customer is related to a CRM customer by using the account number. We do the same thing with price lists and addresses. And then we either will update an order or we will create a new order. We do this by using the SOP number in GP as the order number effectively in CRM. This way, those things will always be the same and we can properly do upserts. We don't have to worry about the orders getting out of sync. We also handle creating the order products through this process. So those are two examples of us uh, having data go from GP to CRM, as well as from CRM to GP. Another example that we have of using Power Automate to sync data between CRM and ERP systems is uh, for Business Central. In this case, we have a Power Page portal that is for dealers to place orders for products that they need at their storefronts. And in order to support our dealer portal, we need to bring in a lot of different record types from Business Central so that we know who the customers are, who the people who are logging in are, and so that when we push order data back to Business Central, we can associate it to the correct customer and associate things to the correct products and things like that so that our data remains consistent between the two systems. Looking at some of the things that we have here, we have the customers coming in and we have items coming in, or two good ones. As far as customers go, we have a custom connector that was set up for Business Central. This is just because we want to do our queries to Business Central a very specific way and want to bring back some custom, some data from some custom tables and custom uh, columns in Business Central. So we use uh, some custom APIs to support that. So we've used a custom connector for this. So we call our custom connector definition for getting customers out of Business Central that belong in the portal. And then here you see we're just mapping the necessary data from BC to a customer in Dataverse, which is being used for the portal. You'll notice that for the row ID here, we're using the same ID as what's in Business Central. This makes it so that we can just use the GUID of the customer in Business Central as the GUID for a customer in Dataverse. And that's a very easy way to make sure that our data remains in sync between the two systems. The GUIDs are the same, so it's very easy to identify which customer uh, in BC is a certain customer in Dataverse or CRM. As far as items go, I can bring up this one as well. We do effectively the same thing. We have a custom connector definition that is built uh, for BC to get items and item data that we need for our portal. And then for each one, we run this separate Power Automate flow that brings in that item. We check for the item based on the item number in Business Central. That's our linking key between the two systems. And then if we find that, you know, an item with that item ID, we update it. Otherwise, we create a new one. That's another case of the data validation being in place and making sure that we have consistency between 
the two systems. As you can see with this, there's a lot of different ways that, or a lot of different types of data that you can move between your ERP system and your CRM or Dataverse. And Power Automate's a great tool for that, whether it's data moving to the ERP or data moving from the ERP. Um, hopefully this was a useful demo and let us know if you have any questions. One thing I'd like to, to mention here is that what Tyler is, is showing you during this demo is these are very, uh, I would say, more advanced examples and probably the more complex that you run into when you're building out connectivity with an ERP or whatever system. So I, I just want to state that this is a low-code, no-code tool, and we have a lot of clients that leverage this tool themselves. We do offer training and you know support for clients that would like to tackle some of this on their own or in-house. So in this example, I know it was very advanced. And so I think we might at some point, if we could follow up with maybe speak with each of you on maybe the option of getting some training on Power Automate or a chance to, to work with you directly with it and give you some more basic examples of like automation and workflow that might also help. And then you notice on the right side, I want to pause it here so you can see how Microsoft has embedded Copilot into Power Automate now. So it does allow you to, autom to leverage Copilot and you can literally just type in, in natural language, as they say, what you would like the flow, as they call these, what you would like the flow to do. So I think that's pretty, pretty neat. All right. So let's switch back over here. All right. And with that, I believe we have our one last poll question, Elisa. Yes, we do. And since it was popped up a little bit earlier, I'll read the question and the answers again for you all. And then I'll show the results. So the question was, how often do you feel like your accounting ERP system suffers from a lack of connectivity and integration? And the options were all the time, occasionally, not often, or rarely. And these are the results of poll question three. So most of you said occasionally, and then it was almost a tie between all the time and not often. All right. And with that, I think we can open it up for some questions. Thank you, Jason and Tyler. Yes, as Jason said, we can start our Q&A live. If anyone has further questions about anything that Jason and Tyler shared today and we don't get to your question, please feel free to reach out to us at info at lbmctech.com. Um, Jason, one of the questions would be, what are the licensing requirements for using Power Automate for integration? Yeah, obviously that's a, a common question that we get is, what, this sounds great guys, but how much does it cost? You would think, I would say, oh, it's $15,000 a year, right? I think with, with all this can do, I think that would be a pretty reasonable price for, for that kind of value. Um, but actually, it's $15 a user a month. Uh, and not all users would necessarily need to be licensed for this. So it would just be the ones that are developing the flows or, or utilizing the flows like during our demonstration. So $15 a month. And in fact, Power Automate does actually come with some of the other applications, such as Dynamics 360 CRM. Um, I believe this is central. There's a few other office levels. I think it's E3 or higher that get a Power Automate subscription as well. So easy to license. Great. We just had another question come in. Thank you for answering that one, Jason. This question comes from Chris and he's asking or, or stating that we have users collecting data using Microsoft Forms. Can Power Automate get at this data? I think I heard the question correctly. I broke it just a little bit. So the question is, can we use Power Automate to retrieve results or responses from Microsoft Forms? Is that a correct? Yes, he's stating that they have some um, users that collect data using Microsoft Forms, and he wants to know uh -huh. if Power Automate can get at that kind of data. So if you're, and I'm not sure if you're using, if you're referring to Microsoft Forms Pro, but if you're referring to Microsoft Forms Pro, yes, because that data, those results are stored in Dataverse. Any data that's stored in Dataverse, and of course, we already talked about anything outside of that even, we can connect to with Power Automate, but especially if it's in Dataverse, because it'll essentially have a direct means to communicate with it or connect to it. Yeah, that's a good question. Yes, was a good question. We have another one from Donald. Um, he says, if a connector exists that is a premium connector, does that 
preclude you from creating a custom non-premium version on your own? Would that depend on whether third-party APIs are available? Yeah, that's a good question. But number one, even if there was an existing connector, there's no reason why you couldn't create your own custom connector. We, we've actually done that several times ourselves for clients. So that would not be an issue. As was said, really the only time we run into any kind of roadblocks or sort of speed bumps is when the system that we're trying to connect to, to, to their point, the API may not have necessarily some of the calls that we need in their toolkit. So it, sometimes we get limited there, but the applications that we connect to these days, more likely than not, they have a pretty well-developed API and, and uh, SDK that we can use to um, set up a custom connector. Yeah, I, I see the point of the question there. And we, we used to run a little into complications with, again, the, the what we were trying to connect to in some cases, but we see less and less of that these days. And uh, you can always create a custom connector. Great, thank you, Jason. Um, another question came in from Roger Worthy. Uh, it's a two-part question. So wants to know if there's any pre-built processes such as journal entry approval and can Power Automate be used to perform tasks that rely on recognizing text, specifically creating bookmarks and a PDF based on report titles on the various pages? Ooh, that's a good one. So the, the first question about the, the journal entry, like being a, something that's available as a out-of-the-box solution or whatnot, is the answer to that is no, we would need to create a new flow to do that. And maybe a power app if there's like a, an approval process involved. But again, that's something that we've already run into the request of another client. So it's something we could certainly talk about again. As far as being able to tag or scan through a, a PDF and, and flag particular titles, that is actually a, a, a great use case to train an AI model, which does have OCR available. So we would take a look at the document and we would use what's called, if you want to look it up, it used to be called AI Builder. It's now called Copilot Studio and it's excellent for scanning documents. It can tag documents. It can obviously has like a whole document management workflow capability to it, but you do have to train it. it it's, it's a, you might say just kind of a off the shelf, a dumb AI when you start, but after you train it on what to recognize and what to do, then obviously we could handle that request. I, I'd love to discuss that particular use case. Uh, was that Roger you said? So if he has any, if you'd like to dive that a little further, I'd love to talk to him about that one. That would be fun. Great. Okay. And we have just a few minutes left here, but one more quick question from Brittany. Can you connect to and pull data from Enterprise Manager or Crunch Time? Um, enterprise manager or crunch time. I'm, I'm not familiar with crunch time, but as long, I would say as, as long as they have an API SDK uh, type toolkit or an API tool set, then we should be able to create a connector for it. Right? So that's, what's going on in the industry in like in this industry right now is that there's th these different platforms and tools. And right now everybody is trying to connect, create connectors. So it's about creating this big library of connectors that people can just acquire and plug in and then start communicating with, with their ERP system with these other applications. If you said it was Katie, I think that, that, that mentioned that. If, if she'd like to maybe follow up after the uh, the session at some point, we can look into that for her, but yes. I'm that. but yeah. Yes, that was Brittany. And thank you all for all of your wonderful questions. If we didn't get to any of your questions today, again, we can answer them after today. If you reach out to us at info at lbmctech.com. I do want to thank you again for joining us for today's webinar. Hope it's been informative and valuable to everyone who came on. Please keep an eye out for more webinars this year. We do have a page on our website that you can visit for our upcoming events and webinars to stay abreast of the latest. And other than that, we just want to say thank you again for joining us. We look forward to seeing you in the future. If you have any further questions or do need guidance on how to get started, our team is always available to support and assist you.